Hi, everybody. Today I'm going to go over Broadcom Incorporated, ticker symbol AVGO. It was one of my recent purchases and I think will be a good long term buy. Let's go. All right, everybody. So one of the first things I want to do when I'm looking at a new purchase for a new stock company is to go to the investor relations of their website. So if you type in um, AVGO investor relations, it'll come up right away. Just hopefully if the Google search works well. So it has Broadcom, has a current price, market cap. This is a large cap fund, obviously $126 billion. And then you can go to company information. Okay, let's go over some of the basics of it. So at a glance, they had a revenue of $22.6 billion, one of the largest IP portfolios, 23,000 patents and increasing, and they buy quite a bit of other patents as well to keep a strong moat, keep a good player in different radio uh, frequency items and whatnot. They have 23 category leading semiconductor and infrastructure software divisions. And they made a $4.7 billion investment. As you'll see, they invest a lot in research and development, a lot in stock buybacks, and a lot in dividends. And those are three good things that I look for for a company. This is the heritage of the company. All of these are somewhat incorporated into Broadcom. One of the biggest Broadcom acquisitions was in 2016 when it combined with Avgeo Technologies. One of the big ones that they did recently was Systematic. That's for security, you know, for viruses and whatnot. And they also make semiconductors for HP, AT&T, and Apple, as you'll see. A lot of different infrastructure socks, hardwares, mainframe computers for big businesses, digital business opportunities, cybersecurity, again, a growing field they're looking for, and also payment security, since a lot of... Um, purchases are now being made online. Payment security is also going to be, I think, a pretty good growth product as well. They do networking, connecting different computers and different companies together, computing and storage. They even make connected devices and help uh, other companies with parts in their connected devices, customer premises, and also service providing. One of the big fields that's been doing well with them is the wireless. They do the radio frequency bands, 2G, 3G in the past, most of the 4Gs, high-end phones like Apple and Samsung right now are being used, and 5G as well. They're going to be a growing field to making these bands. So any of the phones that want to use 5G internet are going to need these. Bluetooth is one of their main ones as well. They make Wi-Fi bands that are pretty strong and secure, and GNSS bands. Industrial, optical sensing, automation, motion control, LEDs. So they're helping a lot of other technology companies make their products. Semiconductors is a large percent of their revenue, over 75%. Infrastructure software or cybersecurity, again, I think is going to be a growing field. It shows the acquisition of Systematic in November 2019. So that could be another growth area that they have. Here's our financial data. It's been increasing every year in their revenues pretty dramatically. Their gross margins is very high. Tech companies are usually a little bit higher, but we're looking at 71% last year. Um, Non-GAAP earnings, again, increasing. Free cash flow, a lot of money that they have available. One of the negatives to this company is the debt. But as you'll see in this chart, the free cash flow is pretty steadily increasing and pretty large. So the debt might not be as big of an issue. Look at the dividend growth, um, 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. It's just a, not even a straight line up. It's more of a curve up. It's been increasing very dramatically. And we're at $3.25 per share that you own. Just think in the year 2015, you were averaging about $0.40 cents a share. Literally five years later, you're almost 10 times that amount. It's about eight times more in your dividend payments. And the stock price has appropriately went up as well with this. Corporate leadership, Hock Tan is one of the forefront CEOs for um, doing these acquisitions that they make, making their products very useful for different companies. 
They also have a pretty young managing staff, so I'll help them possibly grow into the future pretty well and not have to do a lot of turnover. And so the division leadership, well positioned for the future. You're not buying for the present and the past, you're buying for future outlooks. Technology leadership, semiconductor, infrastructure software, portfolio of many different products, and they look to acquire other companies that are similar to what they make and robust business models that are diversified and sustainable. We go to Seeking Alpha, you'll see a lot of their data. The stock price is a bit high. This, I'm making this video on July 16th and it's 311 per share. So you are getting a pretty decent dividend if you're getting $3.24, $3.25 per share per quarter. So you're getting about 1% per quarter. Um, this ends up being a 4% yield, which is pretty high for a semiconductor company. Uh, here's some of their financials. Again, revenue has been increasing. TTM is this year, so that's not the full year yet. But as you can see, the TTM already is higher in their revenue than it was all of last year by November. Income, operating income, pretty level the last those two years and then steadily increasing. The um, operating income the year before was a little bit lower because they had more in interest. Their interest expenses are probably their only big red flag that I could see. They do carry on quite a bit of debt, but as we saw before, the cash flow is very high as well. Income tax expenses or any. Um, earnings from operating income, again, pretty high numbers in earnings. Net income, also very large numbers. Next, let's look at the dividends. They're paying 4.14% in dividends. So again, if you take the share price of, or you take the dividends of 325 per quarter, you times it by four quarters, you should be getting $13 per share in dividends this year. As you can see, the dividends have been increasing very dramatically as well. So you're not gonna be getting the $13 per share next year. You should most likely be getting more than that, as you'll see in the chart. The five-year dividend growth rate is 55.5%. That's a huge growth rate. Literally, um, $13, if it kept this rate up, would be about $18 a share in just five years. So not only do they have a high dividend yield, they have a high growth rate. They've been growing their dividend for nine years, so they'll soon be um, in the 10-year status of VIG and other um, index funds for it. Payout ratio is at 60%. A little bit slightly on the higher end, but I think 75% or less is okay. Since they're paying out 60% of their earnings and dividends, the extra 40% they have to make extra debt payments or current debt payments, and also to grow in their research and development. Dividend history. And that's the last five years, very steady increases. Here it is from 2011. If you bought in 2011, you were getting seven cents a share. Now you're getting $3.25 a share. That is dramatic dividend growth. I don't expect them to continue this into the long future, but if they could just get even a 15 to 20% dividend growth, that would be very good for the company. Here's a new resource that I found, tipranks.com. This will show analyst price targets on AVGO. 25 different analysts say this is a strong buy currently. Um, 21 were buy. Three were hold, zero or sell. And these are the ranges of they think what the stock price will be in the next 12 months. So even the low is at 305 and currently it's at 311. So even on the low end, even if the stock doesn't do anything, you still get this really strong yield on cost, dividend growth 50% the last five years, getting a current 4% dividend. So even on the low end, that's really not that bad of news. The average is 352, which is a 13% gain. If the company keeps increasing their dividends, um, they're going to be paying out more per share. That's going to look more favorable to a lot of investors, which should drive up the share price. Many dividend growth companies, as the growth rate stays very high, the share price should also go high. Finally, this happened in January. Broadcom strikes a $15 billion deal with Apple to sell iPhone parts. This will be a three-year plan. 
Apple is 20% of Broadcom's net revenue and 25 um, last year, 25% to 2018. So it's a pretty high percent. They do depend on Apple. That could possibly be a risk. Think about Qualcomm a long time ago. They had initial prospects for cell phone chips and then they lost some of them. So that is one that I'm a little concerned about, but Apple's also a very strong company and Apple's going to be looking into making their 5G phones real soon. Broadcom does several chips, chips for the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and the RF front-end chip. Now, Apple's not going to be taking a lot of risk in their new iPhones because they want to make sure their 5G works for us the best in the business. And Broadcom makes one of the best chips in the business for it as well. So Apple's planning to launch 5G compatible iPhones in the next few years. It gives companies who make wireless components an opportunity to gain new business and sell parts compatible with it. Again, 20% last year. Estimate each iPhone contains $10 worth of Broadcom parts. So every time someone buys a new iPhone, 10 parts of their re $10 of revenue is going to Broadcom. And obviously they're going to be growing from there and all the other chips that they make. So again, AVGO was a company that I did buy. Um, looking at the stock price this week, it's at 311.36. The last this stock was in my radar in the last month. And at one point it was at $320 a share. Around here, I placed a limit order for $310. So I know I wanted the stock. I didn't necessarily want to pay $320, but $310 is only a few percent lower. Placed the limit order. It actually hit around here. It was around $308.80. I only bought a few shares because it is a lot of money per share. Um, do plan on buying more if the stock price hovers around 300 to 320-ish or so in the next possible six months or so. I think it's going to be a good stock for the long run in, in terms of their yield, uh, dividend growth. And if you look at the share price, it gained 1,269% since 2010. Huge stock gains. Um, this stock is also in VYM. Uh, that's my high yield dividend portfolio for ETFs. And they that's one of the biggest chip makers in that one as well because they look at the yield and the growth. So I've uh, been doing a little bit more on individual purchases. My portfolio now has quite a few new options from even a month ago. So ABGO is now in my list. A MasterCard I made a video of about a month ago. You could check that out. I also gave reasons why I bought that. Visa, I didn't make a video on, but um, possibly might. Visa and MasterCard, I looked at the data on both of them and I decided they're both pretty good and strong companies. I didn't want to necessarily pick one over the other, so I bought equal amounts of both. And I did buy a few shares of AT&T, looking at to getting 100 shares of that. So if you have any questions, thoughts about AVGO or any of the other companies I mentioned, please leave a comment down below. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. This definitely helps the channel out. I've been doing videos pretty regularly and looking to do at least a video a week, possibly two or even three a week when opportunities arise. So if you have any questions and you might want me to do a video based on it, please let me know and I'll talk to you guys next time.